with our Vikings. Vikings. Today is April 28th and we are following a day one schedule. We hope everyone had a great April break and had a good week. Today we want to give you a wellness month recap, then some of the tennis team's terrific highlights, and a message about Autism Acceptance Month. Here with our first story on wellness month is Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel with Wake Up Winter. With wellness month coming to an end, we wanted to recap all the amazing events we had and take a look at how students and staff stay healthy. With Wellness Month coming to an end, WHS students and staff heard from many guest speakers about many different wellness topics during different assemblies, ranging from mental health to substance abuse. We saw many community businesses and members come to a wellness fair to share their knowledge and skills to promote mental and physical well-being. Mental and physical wellness is a lifelong practice that everyone will constantly need to work on. There is no finish line, but rather a constant checklist that allows yourself to maximize your potential by ensuring you get enough exercise, sleep, nutrition, community involvement, and relationships. As a way to wrap up Wellness Month this week, we wanted to see how WHS students and staff keep themselves mentally and physically healthy. Hey everyone! So, um... Stress relief is super important and managing anxiety is really important to, um... Just like my daily routine and habits, I do have a stressful job. Um, I was in a really stressful doctorate program for a while. Um, and some things I did is um, I exercised, even if it was just like walking. Um, I take brain breaks where I just like step away from my work when I'm feeling overwhelmed or I'm feeling like muddled in the work, um, just to take a few minutes to myself to collect myself. Um, I'm also a huge practitioner of reflecting and thinking um, about what I need to do that day and organizing my thoughts and tasks for that day so I know the goals I have to hit um, so I don't feel overwhelmed by all the things that life throws at us. I think it's very important to stay healthy mentally and physically and I do that by going on walks, daily walks with my friends. It's really like almost therapeutic because I talk with my friends and I just I laugh and I enjoy the time that I'm with them. And it's also really good to get in your steps, cardio, get your heart rate going, burn some cows, you know. It's really good way to stay fit and mentally stable. When I deal with stress, I take naps. I do trash. So when I'm really stressed out, I like to take a deep breath, go for a walk, spend time outdoors. One of my favorite things to do is gardening. So I like to plant some seeds, and I have some peas here that students grew, some green beans, and some radishes. So gardening for me is really therapeutic. Um, I think staying healthy is really important. Something I like to do is stay busy. Um, and by staying busy, we like to go walking around Boston. You know, uh, mental and physical health is uh, it's a lifelong journey, you know what I mean? So uh, you're constantly having to think about it, constantly having to kind of do some check-ins with yourself. Um, and so, you know, sometimes like what I, you know, my biggest thing is I really just like to spend a lot of time outside. Uh, in the winter, that really looks like I go snowboarding basically every weekend. Uh, in the summer, I'm usually hiking most weekends up in the mountains. So just being outside um, is really helps me out tons, uh, making sure that I'm staying active. Um, and then just other things like, you know, staying in touch with friends and family um, and just, you know, talking, talking things over. So that's kind of what I do to uh, help myself through some tough times and uh, yeah. Um, I think staying healthy is really, really important because it allows you to do so much things like sports, um, drama, anything. All right, so when I'm stressed, and if that stress leads to like feeling, you know, bouts of anxiety, um, I do several things. The easiest thing that I found worked really well for me is deep breathing exercises, um, which is really simple. You take in a deep breath, you hold it, you release. Some people like to count while they do it, um, but it, uh, if you're consistent, it can be pretty helpful. The other thing I do is what uh, are called cognitive behavioral techniques, and that's understanding like for me it's a lot of negative talk that can work up my anxiety or stress so I try to uh, prevent that by realizing what I'm doing so sometimes if I'm exaggerating how bad something is it's catastrophizing right so if I'm recognizing hey that's what I'm doing right now or or I'm overgeneralizing um, or I'm really worried, oh, I said something to somebody, did they take it the wrong way? Um, I'm worst case scenario, right, type thinking. 
um, I try to walk myself back out of that. It takes practice, but I think they're pretty effective techniques. So a couple of things that I do to keep myself healthy is I eat well, I also dance, so I just kind of like to keep my body moving, so um, I stay obviously healthy. Thank you for tuning in this month and working on your mental and physical health. Although April is Wellness Month, try to put these ideas into practice all year long. Stay healthy and back to you. Thank you, Rachel. And just know, if you are struggling with anything, ask for help and talk to the people around you. There are a lot of resources within our school and community, so make sure that if you or a friend needs help, just reach out to the proper networks. Our next door will be looking at our WHS tennis team to see how they have started up with their season. Here is Nate with the story. Every week, we've taken a look at one of our spring sports teams to see what they have in store for the season. So this week, we'll be taking a look at both our boys' and girls' tennis teams. The boys' tennis team is currently sitting at 1-3, but have been playing very well. After narrowly losing the first two games of the season to Watertown and Mystic Valley, they pulled off their first win last week against Salem. With most of the tennis team graduating last year, the team is in need of some strong senior leadership. This comes in the form of senior captain Joe Romano, with some juniors in Luke Owen and Jack Osborne not too far behind. We caught up with Joe and Andrew to find out more about their season. Uh, our goal for this year, we want to try to win a couple of games. We have a really um, young team. The entire varsity team last year graduated, so everyone is new to varsity this year. So we're just going to try to um, build some chemistry with each other and put on a um, representative season. I think a good goal for this year is going to be to just keep trying our hardest, even if we don't win. We're going against some hard teams like Marblehead and Swamp Scott. Uh, so even if we don't win, as long as we try our hardest, I think it's going to be good. Well, this year, we've a lot of players have stepped up. First singles, Jack has done a great job stepping in and playing some of the best players. Luke has done a great job stepping up. Same thing with uh, Andrew and Arin. My doubles partner, Nick, has been great all year. And uh, same thing with newcomers never played before, Nathaniel and Joe Disney and Alan. We have, we have a few people that have stepped up. Uh, a lot of people have gone up from JV to varsity since our team is so small. We only have nine people this year. Uh, we've even had freshmen on varsity like Joe Disney. He's played on varsity once. Uh, on the court, I feel like we've been giving it all this year. We have, we've left everything on the court and I feel like that's really good. And if we keep playing as like we're playing, we're going to start winning more and more games. Uh, we've been playing decent. We've had some rough matches. Uh, We've won a few, we've lost a few, but it's been pretty good. I'm looking forward, we got some good games coming up. We play Salem again, that's a very, we beat Salem out already this year, so it's a very winnable matchup. Um, there's a lot of, there's a couple teams here we never played before, so we don't know how good they're gonna be, so, you know, it could be the way. The girls' record is the same as the boys, as they currently sit one and three. With some early losses to some very tough teams, the girls took their first game last week against Salem. With a lot of new players added to the roster, the team has been focusing on building chemistry between other players and coaches. Every player on the team has been working hard to improve and contributing to the team. While being coached by Mr. Beck, the girls are looking to end the season off strong and with an NEC championship. We caught up with senior captain Casey Peterson and junior Mia Ivanis to tell us more about how the team is doing up to this point. Um, definitely one goal that I set for both myself and the team this year is to definitely learn how to work well as a team and be able to talk to each other and just confide in each other and both learn from each other on and off the courts. So something I definitely want to improve on this year is probably my serving just because um, I really want a good like first serve that I can depend on and I also just want to improve on everything you know I feel like everything can always be fixed on like improved. Um, definitely one goal that I set for both myself and the team this year is to definitely learn how to work well as a team and be able to talk to each other and just confide in each other and both learn from each other on and off the court. This year um, I'm very much looking forward to playing Danvers because they're a very good competition for us and I believe that if we try hard and work well as a team that we can definitely beat them. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing Saugus and Peabody again. Um, they had a really great team and I feel like they were very much at our level so you know I'm looking forward to playing them again maybe improving like stuff that I did last time just so I can see how I like played then versus the next game that I played them at. From junior Emily Barrera has really stepped up. She has improved so much from the last season to this season and just watching her improve is great to see and I can't wait to see what she, uh, she shows us for the rest of the season.
I think that definitely Anila has stepped up on our team. You know, she's a sophomore, she's working really, really hard. Her forehands are awesome, and she's always putting her best out on the court. Come out and show your support for both the teams as the season progresses. Both teams will be taking on Marblehead May 1st at 4 p.m. The boys will be away at Marblehead High School, while the girls will be at home. That's all for me, now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Nate, and good luck to both the boys and girls tennis team as they get into the middle of their season. We'll be completing our highlight of the spring sports season next week with sailing and track. If you don't know already, April is Autism Acceptance Month, and today we have a special story brought to us by Winthrop's own Scout to tell us more about this month and what autism acceptance means to people. Here is Scout with the story. Good morning, Winthrop Vikings, and happy Autism Acceptance Month. I'm Scout Thompson, and this week for Wake Up Winthrop, I was requested to do a special segment for the occasion. And being on the spectrum myself, I am here to educate on what autism is, some common misconceptions, and how you can show your sport. Let's get started. Most people envision the autism spectrum to look like this a linear and vague measurement of the quote-unquote severity of one's autism symptoms. But autism isn't all black and white like that. The spectrum has been reimagined to look like this, a wheel with varying levels of different symptoms. Everyone is different. My wheel looks like this, but someone else's could look like something else entirely. My original plan for this segment was to interview autistic students here at Winthrop High to get a better understanding of the variety, but unfortunately, as I am recording this, I am recovering from a fever, so paper cutouts it is. As much as I would love to talk about just myself for a few minutes, uh, the truth of the matter is that I am just one of millions and millions of autistic people in the world. It's impossible for me to speak for all of them. Instead, I would like to shine a light on some organizations run by individuals on the spectrum. There's the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network. As the name states, they are led by autistic self-advocates working to improve the quality of life for other autistic people through handbooks, toolkits, policy briefs, action alerts, campaigns, and social media. Autistic Women and Non-Binary Network, which provides support and resources specifically to, you guessed it, women and non-binary people who have autism. And the Association for Autistic Community, which hosts conferences and retreats so those on the spectrum can make connections with each other. Of course, those are only a few of many, but I highly suggest checking them out and give your support. And while Autism Speaks is the most popular autism organization, only a small amount of people on the board actually have autism, and according to the tax exemption forms, which you can find on their website, they spend most of their budget on marketing than they do on resources that could benefit the people they advocate for. That's why I personally choose not to light it up blue, as they are the ones who coined the term, and I'd rather give my support to organizations that are entirely run by people who are just like me. I'm glad I got to talk about all of this with all of you. There's so much more information I could ramble about, but there isn't enough time in the world to get all of that off my chest. So I'll just leave you with one final message. Awareness isn't what we need. I mean, we know we exist and you know we exist, so there's not really much to be aware about. So rather than promote autism awareness, why not start advocating for autism acceptance? Thank you for tuning in. Roll bikes. Thanks so much for sharing your story, Scout. Good luck to all of our sports teams this weekend and throughout the week next week. Well, that's all we have for you guys this week. We hope everyone had a great week and an even better weekend. Roll, Roll bikes. bikes.